This video is about public key cryptography. When Alice and Bob exchange confidential messages, they use an encryption scheme to keep their secrets safe from Eve. Symmetric encryption schemes, such as one-time pad, require Alice and Bob to firstly agree on a new key whenever one of them wants to send a message. They can do this by using a key exchange protocol, such as Diffie-Hellman. But what if multiple people need to send confidential messages to Alice? Every person that wants to send an encrypted message to Alice would have to firstly agree on a key with Alice. Is it really necessary to run a key exchange protocol whenever someone needs to send an encrypted message? Public key cryptography offers a great alternative. Asymmetric encryption. In order to receive messages, Alice generates two keys. The first one is the secret key, which she keeps to herself, and the second one is the public key, which she makes publicly available. This way, everyone can use Alice's public key to encrypt messages that only Alice can decrypt. So, when Carol wants to send a message to Alice, she takes a look at Alice's public key. The public key encryption scheme allows Carol to encrypt her message. She sends her ciphertext to Alice. Alice can decrypt the ciphertext using her secret key. Cryptography does not only offer a variety of symmetric encryption schemes. It also provides plenty of asymmetric encryption schemes. In this video, we will take a look at how the El Gamal public encryption scheme works. Let's first see how Alice obtains her pair of keys using El Gamal's key generation algorithm. We are working in the multiplicative group ZP, where P is a large prime number, and we have a generator G. These values are public. Alice chooses her secret key as a random number between 1 and P-1. Then, Alice obtains her public key by raising G to the power of Ks modulo P. What can an eavesdropper, such as Eve, derive from the public information available? Pause the video to think about it. Eve should not have enough computing power to obtain Alice's secret key from the publicly available information. Hence, we require that the discrete logarithm assumption holds. The encryption and decryption algorithms need one more assumption, known as the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption, or CDH. Let us pick two exponents, A and B, uniformly at random. Then, if Eve sees the values of G raised to the power of A and to the power of B modulo P, it should be hard for her to compute the value of G raised to the power of A times B modulo P. Keeping this idea in mind, we can now see how we can encrypt messages in the El Gamal encryption scheme. Bob wants to send the message M to Alice. He first picks a random exponent. The cipher text will then have two components. C1 and C2. C1 is going to disguise Bob's secret message M. Bob hides his message by multiplying it with a hiding factor. He computes this factor by raising the value of the public key to the power of X. When decrypting this cipher text, Alice will compute this hiding factor as well. Sharing X will allow any eavesdropper to decrypt the cipher text. Luckily, the additional information Alice needs for computing this factor is G to the power of X, which is useless to any eavesdropper because of our assumptions. This information is included in C2. Bob then sends C1 and C2 to Alice. Let us now see how Alice can decrypt this cipher text. Firstly, she knows how to compute Bob's hiding factor. Since exponents are commutative, she obtains this factor by raising C2 to the power of Ks. Alice obtains this very simple equation, where the only value she doesn't know is the message m. She can compute the missing value by multiplying C1 with the inverse of the hiding factor. Note that this is not the same as division on real numbers, since we are working in the multiplicative group Zp. Luckily, Alice knows she can easily invert the hiding factor using Fermat's little theorem. Pause the video for a second and write down the final step. After going through all this math, we managed to obtain Bob's message. This happens regardless of the pair of keys obtained by Alice in the key generation algorithm, which means that the scheme is correct. But is the scheme secure? Let us first check if Eve can decrypt a cipher text on her own, given that she only sees the public key, C1 and C2. Pause the video for a minute to think about it. 
Whenever Eve successfully decrypts ciphertexts, she essentially solves the computational Diffie-Hellman problem. In order to convince you of this, let us first rename a few variables from CDH to match the notations in the Elgamol encryption scheme. So far, the inputs of CDH match the public key and the second component of the ciphertext expected by Eve. Our solution for CDH would be the hiding factor in C1. To enable Eve to help us obtain this solution, we also need to choose a value for C1. What value should we pick? Pause the video for a minute to think about it. We simply set C1 to a random element of the group. This is the same as showing Eve the encryption for a random message, and she will be happy to help us decrypt it. If Eve manages to find a message M that is a valid decryption, we can easily extract a solution for CDH. This is because C1 is M multiplied by the solution we were looking for. So, Eve has helped us obtain a solution for CDH. However, Eve has limited computing power, and our additional steps only add a negligible overhead. If Eve has a significant success probability in decrypting ciphertexts, then, with her help, we are contradicting the CDH assumption. This means that Eve can only decrypt messages with negligible probability. That is, almost never. But is this enough to guarantee that the scheme is secure? It is possible that Eve is not as clueless as we imagine. For example, what if Eve only manages to derive 8 out of 10 digits of some encrypted message? Maybe she could then derive all the confidential information in the message. Then, the scheme is not really secure. Once Eve sees a ciphertext, it should be impossible for her to tell whether the encrypted message is this message here, or any other group element, hence the encryption of any other message. This would be perfect security. We will require one more assumption to ensure that the Elgamol encryption scheme achieves perfect security. This is the decisional Diffie-Hellman assumption, known as DDH. The setup of DDH is similar to the setup of CDH, with the exception that Eve sees a third value, H. This value can either be the solution of CDH, or just a random group element. Eve has to decide which one it is. And we assume that this problem is hard. Eve doesn't have enough computational power to solve it. Under the DDH assumption, Elgamol achieves perfect security. From Eve's point of view, any ciphertext looks like a random group element. It could be the encryption of any message. Pause the video for a minute to think why this is the case. Besides security, Elgamol offers an additional interesting property. It is a homomorphic scheme. This means that, if we multiply the encryptions of two messages M and M', prime, we obtain a valid ciphertext for the message M times M'. Prime. Pause the video for a minute to check this out. Homomorphic schemes are interesting for voting systems, as they allow us to compute with encrypted data. There are specific cases where Elgamol could be useful. For example, Alice needs to decide on whether to order a non-vegan pizza, or a vegan pizza for her and her friends. She would prefer the non-vegan pizza, but, if there is any vegan in the group, she is happy to go for the vegan pizza. Her friends vote 0 or 1. Voting 0 means definitely vegan, while voting 1 means no preference. However, they do not want to make their votes public. So, they can encrypt their votes using Elgamol and Alice's public key. To ensure that nobody can see their preferences, they will not send their encrypted votes to Alice. Instead, they will send them to Carol, who is unable to decrypt them. Carol multiplies the encryptions, including the encryption of her own vote, and sends the result to Alice. Finally, Alice can decrypt the result. If anyone voted zero, the decrypted value is zero, and Alice orders vegan pizza. In this video, you have learned about public key encryption, which is just a part of public key cryptography. You have learned about the decisional Diffie-Hellman assumption, which is the basis of Elgamol's perfect security guarantees. In addition, you were introduced to the concept of homomorphic schemes. Thanks for watching this video.